We all know Six Flags. Great coasters, that's about it. From their 15 amusement parks around North America, they truly are one of the most dominative amusement operators in the industry as they are able to bring in lots of visitors into their parks every year. The main focus of these parks is to bring in attendance, make money, all of that stuff, but with that, they do build some of the best coasters out there, but we can't forget about all of the supporting coasters that make a coaster lineup so great. Great. For instance, when you picture Six Flags Fiesta Texas, you see, you know, Iron Rattler, Wonder Woman, maybe even Superman, but what really makes their lineup shine is the supporting coasters such as Poltergeist, Goliath, and the new for 2022 coaster, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger. These coasters make a park's coaster lineup great, as without them, there will be less to ride, all adding up to a total of 163 coasters in the Six Flags chain. Really, that is a crazy statistic as compared to other park chains, for instance Cedar Fair, they have 124 coasters, SeaWorld with 41, and even Hershend, the chain that operates Dollywood, Silver Dollar City, and more, only has 28 in their parks. It really shows how large an amusement park chain Six Flags has become, as of course that is what I'll be going through in today's video, all of the Six Flags roller coasters in the Six Flags chain. But most importantly, before we start, I will be doing a giveaway for a Jersey Devil Nano Coaster. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment, have a Six Flags day to enter. Also, if you want to see more, make sure to look in the link in the description where you can see all of the Coaster Thrills social media accounts, including Instagram, for updates, and much more. But let's jump in to the video, starting out with the park with the most coasters in the world. You guessed it, Six Flags, Magic Mountain, Twisted Colossus, one of the older RMCs, still being one of the best coasters out there, is the main and best coaster to sit at this park, Goliath, yeah, the ride we don't really care about. There is Tatsu, one of the best b and flying coasters out there. The new for 2019, 2020, whatever year it opened, West Coast Racers is a great dueling Mobius Loop coaster. Actually, the second one in the park, of course, X2, formerly known as X, is an Aeros 40 coaster known to deliver absolutely incredible, insane rides. You have, of course, the parking lot coaster and scream a solid being on floorless probably the best stand-up coaster out there in riddler revenge another bnm and one of the best batman the rod clones such an intense experience Apocalypse is a fantastic GCI Woody that packs a punch in every way. Viper is a great era looper that for its age is fantastic. The tallest coaster in the world when it opened in 1997 is Superman Escape from Krypton, a solid 28 seconds of a ride. Full Throttle is a wacky but unique multi-launch coaster, the first ever coaster with a loop in the new revolution, formerly known as Just the Revolution. You do have some lower tier coasters in the park's Mine Train, Gold Rusher, and of course the Aero Suspended coaster in Ninja. And to complete the park's lineup, you have their Kitty Coasters in Canyon Blaster, Magic Flyer, Roadrunner Express, and you cannot forget the one, the only, Speedy Gonzalez Hot Rod Racers, without a doubt, the best ride in the park. Knowing that this park has a record of 19 coasters, which is just so crazy to think about, they will be the first 220 with their new for 2022 project in the almost clone of Jersey Devil located at Six Flags Great Adventure. Speaking of that park, let's move over to New Jersey as we will start off with the tallest coaster in the world, King Dakar the not as good dragster. Still a great ride though. You have the absolute beast in El Toro that even though I do claim it to be overrated by a lot, like a lot a lot, 
it still has some fantastic airtime moments, you cannot deny that one bit. As was anticipated, the new for our 2021 coaster, Jersey Devil, a solid RMC Raptor that has some great moments to it, the B&M Hyper Coaster of the park while Nitro, while being one of the oldest hypers, it is still such a good ride. Of course, we have the Batman the Ride clone, probably one of the worst ones though, at least in my opinion as some of the other clones such as Joker and honestly, I mean, who really cares about that one? The same with Superman Ultimate Flight. Yeah, it's probably the worst out of all the Superman clones. You have a solid floorless in Bizarro, actually the same thing as Scream at Magic Mountain, a solid ride, another B&M in the relocated stand-up Green Lantern. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this ride, you really have to brace for the roughness through the entire ride experience, definitely making it, you know, less enjoyable, but as well, this park has some other smaller coasters such as Skull Mountain, a super cool indoor coaster. The actual actually have two indoor coasters, the other being the Dark Knight, an indoor wild mouse, a standard mine train, and runaway mine train, and of course their kitty kind of family coaster and Harley Quinn crazy train. Now, they do have Little Devil that just opened recently, a kiddie coaster that actually used to be at the park, but they renamed it, repainted it, and relocated it, so it's not that big of an upgrade. As good as this lineup may seem, for me it really does not do much other than the you know standout coasters such as Jersey Devil Coaster and Nitro. Yeah, I just did that. Please don't get mad, please. But that's about it, as the rest of the rides are pretty much clones, or just uninspired layouts at best, which, for 13 coasters, I would not take that as the best look. But getting away from New Jersey, we have Six Flags, Great America, in Chicago, Illinois. This park is home to 15 coasters, a lot of them being one of, if not the first of its kind. Starting out, we have Goliath, the park's wooden RMC ground up, as though... It may be a short ride, it sure packs a punch with some great elements such as the Xerge stall and loop. Opening in 2019 was the addition of Max Force, definitely a great launch and 5 inversions. I have no idea how that's 5 inversions, but anyways, there's also the best Batman clone. Yup, definitely the best Batman clone. You have one of the OG B&M Hyper Coasters in Raging Bull, a coaster that is actually really good, mainly due to that incredible drop in the back, but still, it's a pretty fun ride, otherwise you also have another free spin clone in The Joker. Viper is their other great woody with tons of actually good airtime, definitely a coaster that gets underappreciated a lot, especially since you see almost absolutely no one say how good it is. The same with American Eagle, one of the other great dueling wooden coasters out there. X-Flight is a great VNM wing coaster with so many great near-miss elements. Vertical Velocity, soon to be the Flash, is one of the more rare intimate impulse coasters, and of course, another Superman clone. There is a classic air looper in Demon that though it may be just a tad bit rough, that's a complete fact, you gotta appreciate the history with it. And then you have the coaster that I at least always seem to forget about, the second Dark Knight clone and the Six Flags chain. Wizard is a great, fun family coaster. There's one kitty coaster and Sprott Rocket Rockets, and of course, the legendary Little Dipper, a tiny, and I mean tiny, old wooden coaster. That fun fact was only relocated to this park in 2010, after 59 years of operation at the now gone park of Kittyland. This park's lineup is actually like really good, they have a solid top 3 and some great supporting coasters as well, but so does the first Texas park to make this video, Six Flags Fiesta Texas. They have two outstanding coasters in Iron Rattler, the Quarry Wall Diving RMC Hybrid that is for sure one of the best coasters in the world, that ride is absolute insanity. And then of course you have one of those crazy RMC Raptors in existence, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster as you gotta be a fantastic coaster to compete with Iron Rattler and this coaster does 
just that, but in my opinion, it's definitely not better. There is the newly rethemed Poltergeist, a super fun spaghetti bowl coaster that really is just so good. To me, it's definitely an underrated experience, especially since it is just so good. Superman Krypton Coaster is one of the best floorless coasters out there. Goliath is another fantastic Batman clone that is just so intense and packs a huge punch. And then there's Six Flags, being Six Flags, as this park also has an SNS40 free spin clone and Batman the Ride. The same with Boomerang, probably one of the worst Boomerang clones out there, as this thing is just bad. And guess what? We are not stopping with the clones, as there is a Pandemonium clone as well, Roadrunner Express, that even though it's not the smoothest, it is one of the best mind trains in the world. And finally, we have the Kitty Coaster, Streamliner Coaster. But that's not it. Coming in 2022 is another great death piece to add to this park's coaster collection. That is Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, finally making the park's coaster count as a Eleven. Moving over to the other Texas park, this is the OG Six Flags, Six Flags over Texas, and talking about this park's coaster collection, it's not really the best, at least in my opinion. Their coaster, the best one at least, is New Texas Giant, which even though it was an incredibly innovating and I love this coaster, it's probably the worst RMC. Nevertheless, it still is a great coaster because, well, yeah, RMC is RMC. I think we can all understand that. You know, but getting to our next coaster, we have the park's massive hyper coaster in Titan, pretty much a clone of Goliath at Six Flags, Magic Mountain. You have a premier launch coaster in Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, probably one of the most intense coasters out there, but right next to or is probably the worst Batman the Ride clone, one of the clones at this park. Another clone is the Joker, your standard SNS 40 free spin, Judge Roy Scream, your old, very old school Woody that shows for sure, and then, of course, the park's hidden gem, Shockwave, a Schwarzkopf looper that has some great loops and even some solid airtime pops. Yeah, that's about it. Lavi Bora is their unique Intamin Swiss bobsled coaster. They actually have two mine trains, both of them being meh, even for being a mine train. And of course, you have the great family indoor coaster and Runaway Mountain. There is then, of course, the Six Flags branded clone and Pandemonium, and to cap it off is their standard kitty coaster, Canyon Blaster, but that's not it. Coming in 2022 is Aquaman Power Wave, making it the park's 14th coaster. Heading over to New England, well, of course, we have Six Flags, New England, probably one of, if not the most underrated Six Flags park out there. I absolutely love this place. They have a total of 11 coasters, starting out with their best in Wicked Cyclone, a jam-packed RMC home to so many great elements, such as the fantastic airtime and inversion. Superman the Ride is their massive, intimate coaster that has won so many golden ticket awards. Now to be honest, their lineup does drop off from the top two, I mean, they do have some decent supporting coasters, which I will get to, but their lineup, let's just say, is not the best, as they also have the Dark Knight, a solid b and Flawless. Riddle Revenge is a revamp for Coma SLC that is such a better ride experience after they installed the new restraints, and of course, another free spin clone in the Joker, and of course, their classic Woody in Thunderbolt. Scattered around the park, there are some more clones, such as Pandemonium, just like all of the others, you get the gist. Flashback, your standard boomerang thud is nothing special at all, and Gotham City Gauntlet, blah blah blah, definitely one of the longest names ever. A standout family coaster in Catwoman's Whip and their kitty coaster, Great Chase, so as you can see, as I mentioned, it really does drop off after the top two, but that top two is pretty good, so I would say for sure this is a good lineup overall. Over at 
Georgia, we have Six Flags over Georgia. Yeah, you see what I did there? But yeah, they do have a great RMC in Twisted Cyclone. That for sure packs a huge punch, a fantastic b &M Hyper and Goliath. This thing has some intensity and so, so much airtime. They recently reopened the Riddler Mindbender after a massive upgrade. This thing is another Six Flags classic Swarshkoff coaster. One of the best Batman clones out there as this is probably the most intense and whippiest one. Georgia Scorcher, one of the best B&M stand-up coasters out there, one of the most boring Eurofighters in Daredevil Dive, and of course, your third Superman Flying Clone, the OG Six Flags Superman Clone, and you could definitely tell because of the awesome terrain this coaster incorporates. The jackhammering, but so good machine, is the Great American Scream Machine. Blue Hawk is the park's Vacoma Looper that is better than you would expect. A classic mine train and Dagalona mine train, I think I pronounced that right, and the coaster that I was always never able to get on. Until last New Year, Joker Funhouse Coaster. Heading over, yeah, way over, we have Six Flags Discovery Kingdom located in Vallejo, California. Yeah, I'm speaking of the park that has one half of the park filled to the brim with coasters and attractions. The other half is just bleh. But hey, they do have an RMC hybrid in the Joker, and maybe one of the weaker types of its kind, but still, it's such a great coaster. Also, probably the best being a portless coaster out there in Medusa, at least in my opinion it is. The coaster that never seems to be open in Flash Vertical Velocity, one of the few existing Intimate Impulse coasters, my 600th coaster, Batman the Ride, that even though it's a clone, it's still pretty good. They have a standard Skyrocket 2 in Superman Ultimate Flight, a Sucky Vacoma SLC in Kong, another Sucky Vacoma in one of the worst boomerangs out there, and well, boomerang, yeah, such an original name. One of the most questionable additions in Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster, one of the most clinically average family coasters out there is the How Many Car Coaster, yeah, and of course their kitty coaster, Roadrunner Express. Now their 10 coasters will be upgraded to 11 with their supposed 2022 coaster that may or may not happen, it's Six Flags, who knows, Sidewinder Safari, a standard and I mean very standard Zamperla spinning wild mouse. But yeah, that's it for Cali, as we will head to, well, Mexico, as located in Mexico City is Six Flags, you guessed it. Mexico, home to nine great coasters, such as an incredible top two, from what I have heard, Medusa and Superman El Ultimo Escape. While Medusa's steel coaster is a fantastic RMC, Superman El Ultimo Escape is a massive Morgan Hyper coaster that has such an incredible layout. Really, both of these coasters are incredible and great staples for the coaster lineup in Mexico. But other from the top tube, you also have their SNS 40 Freezeman in Wonder Woman, a Vacoma, Sex Like Crap, Batman the Ride, the standard boomerang of the park, and a normal but fun spinning coaster in the Joker. Yeah, such an original name as well. I know Six Flags coming right back with the unique names. This park does have a Superman Krypton coaster. Seriously, this park actually has two Superman named coasters, but this one compared to its larger counter part is only a small family slash kitty coaster. One of the least known clones is this park's Dark Knight Wild Mouse that always are fun, and then the other kitty slash family coaster is Tsunami Azir Tifoli Coaster. Moving from the heart of Mexico, we have the heart of the US in Six Flags St. Louis, home to nine coasters, even though this park is without question one of the most average to low tier Six Flags parks. To start out is one of the most average GCIs, though it still may be good. This one is American Thunder, a coaster that may be small, but it sure does pack a punch, being one of the great top three wooden coasters on this list, but not the best wooden in the park, though. That, in my opinion, belongs to Screamin' Eagle, a classic woody home to so much airtime as it's just a super fun ride experience. And then we have the third wooden coaster of the 
park. The boss, an absolutely massive wooden beast at the back of the park that really is not as good as you may expect, but it's still not a bad ride. Though these three wooden coasters are solid, nothing in the park is better than Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, definitely the best coaster in the park and probably the best Mr. Freeze clone, yes, please don't hate me, I like it better than the one at Over Texas. Taking it down a notch are some of the more supporting coasters such as the standard Batman the Ride clone, a standard Boomerang clone that is always nothing special, and then, once again, another clone in Pandemonium. You have Ninja, though without a doubt is a great coaster. Yeah, nah man, this coaster sucks, especially for it being half Arrow and Vekoma. That really shows as to an end out this park's lineup. We have their Mine Train and River King Mine Train. Obviously, this lineup is nothing special, with all of their coasters being nowhere near as good as some of these other parks' coasters. The same with Frontier City, which, though this place is charming, their coaster collection is nothing great at all. From their five coasters, they have, I would consider Diamondback their best coaster, the, this thing is really not the best either, but other than that, they do have Silver Bullet, another old looper which really just has a meh layout other than the best part of the ride, the loop. Wildcat is an old woody that is so forgettable I barely even remember any of the ride experience. Steel Lasso, which is a Vacoma family coaster that does pretty much nothing at all, and to finally end it out, their kitty coaster, probably the best coaster in the park to be honest. Frankie's Mine Train. As you can see, there is barely anything special about this lineup. That is why it is so forgettable. As moving on, we have the other park bought by Six Flags is the two park package Six Flags Darien Lake located near Buffalo, New York. As you can tell throughout this video that you are probably wasting your time on, I have not been ranking the parks or coasters on this video, so really take the order with a grain of salt as this definitely takes place as the first coaster I'll be talking about from Darien Lake is one of, if not the worst coaster I have ridden in Predator. The only thing I have to say about this coaster is GCI, RMC, literally any manufacturer. Except for Coma, of course. Please fix this thing because it needs it a hundred percent. But for another coaster in the park, Mind Eraser, just demolish this thing. It is so bad. But on the brighter side of things, there is at least Tantrum, a really good Gerslauer Year Fighter that was sadly closed the last time it went, so that's a good thing, but at least they do have Rite of Steel that is definitely the superior of the clone coming up later in this video. Viper is an okay arrow looper that has some decent inversions, a crappy boomerang, moto coaster which is a short but sweet launch coaster, and the one, the only hoot and holler. But seriously, we can't forget about the best ride in the park, Moose on the Loose. As we get to the lower tier Six Flags parks, you can tell the quality really is not there as out of the nine coasters at Darien Lake, nothing is really incredible. Which the same goes for La Ron, the other at a country Six Flags park, this one being located in Montreal, Canada. Yes, I know your impression of the park may not be the best, you know, mainly due to Taylor's video on how this place sucks, cough cough, but at least they have a BNM Hyper that's not really a hyper, but we'll stretch it out a little bit, even though this coaster looks to actually be pretty good. Vampire, a Batman clone that has a pretty cool name and color scheme, monster that is not operated in ever, it feels like this truly would be an insane RMC, Six Flags, please make this an RMC, it would be so incredible. Once again, another Boomerang, once again, another Vacoma SLC, and Ennor, Dragon, an indoor family coaster that even I didn't know existed until now. Toboggan Nordique is a standard wild mouse that for some reason, even though it's Six Flags, it does have some theming to it, kind of a bobsled theme, and then finally, finishing up their lineup is a kitty coaster, I have no idea how to pronounce this, but here you go. Marche du Melipatis, there ya go. 
Somehow Six Flags thought this was a good idea, but the new for 2022 coaster, this park is getting the relocated Green Lantern now know as V-Pair. But anyways, heading on to the second to last park, we have Six Flags America located in Maryland. When you really think about it, this park has a good nine coasters to their lineup. As to start out, we have Superman the Ride, the less superior clone of these types of rides, but still Still, other than the random straight sections of this ride, it is pretty fun. It has some good airtime, and really you do feel the speed pretty well as the same goes for the premiere rise launch Spaghetti Bull Coaster clone, Joker's Jinx, that though it's definitely not as good as Poltergeist, it's still a great coaster. Somehow a coaster that is always closed no matter what I do is probably even the best coaster in the park, Batwing, the one of the few remaining Vacoma Flying Dutchman coasters that since it is so similar to Firehawk, Forming located at King's Island, I bet this coaster is super good. This park also has the first ever B&M in Firebird. Once again, another Vacoma SLC, and you guessed it, Mind Eraser, one of the most bland and useless woodies out there in Roar, a rough but wild, that's for sure, wooden coaster and wild one that is so fun. Ragin' Cajun is a normal spinning wild mouse, and then you have the kitty coaster Great Chase, which you can see this coaster lineup is actually decent, even though Six Flags will probably never add a new original coaster to this park, and probably ages the same for the last park of this video, Great Escape. This charming park until Six Flags came in and ruined it, is home to six coasters, but honestly, some of these are hidden gems, starting out with by far the best coaster in the park, Comet, this airtime filled old school woody that really is spectacular. I find this coaster very underrated, and definitely from my visit, the only good part that came out of it, as another one of their coasters is Alpine Bobsled, that for me, was closed, but anyways, it looks to be a great and rare creation. Something that is not rare is Flashback. Yeah, you guessed it, another boomerang. How original. They have an air looper in Steam and Demon, a terribly average mine train called Canyon Blaster, and then Frankie's Mine Train, their kitty coaster to end out every single Six Flags coaster out there. Guys, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I truly thank you. I honestly have no idea on how you could stay this long for a video, especially if I'm talking, but now would be a great time for you to click on the subscribe button, as really, you are not gonna miss one bit of what's coming up next on Coaster Thrills. But what do you think of Six Flags? Make sure to post that in the comments below, I read every comment. Love what you guys have to say, and of course, if you're not already, make sure to like the video as it really helps the channel out against the YouTube algorithm, and of course, subscribe for more videos on coasters often. And see ya!